physical control simulator, you're going to do six arcs of the pull phase and six arcs of the push phase. Now you're going to do six 180 degree arcs. What counts as an arc is the arm coming all the way over to the full 180 degree position. You're going to feel it clunk. That will tell you for sure that you have completed the arc. But even just before that, you're going to hear the test administrator, or TA, he will or she will yell out one. So that'll be your first complete arc. You'll come back, this will be two. And then you will do three, four, five, and six. What counts as an arc, again, is that full completion of the 180 degree position. If you do not complete the arc, so let's say you're coming this way and you only get to here, and you start moving the other direction before the arc is complete, you have a choice. You can come back and make the arc count, or you will have to repeat the arc on the other side if you keep going, okay? You'll have to do that before you can continue. Complete or repeat the arc. Now, on the pull phase, Every part of your body is involved in this activity. Your lower body, your legs, your core, and your upper body. The core is critical because it ties your upper and lower body together and makes you a lot stronger than if you don't engage your core. And if you don't use your legs, then you're only using your upper body and it's much more difficult than it has to be. So, you need to stand close enough to the machine that you're able to use your legs. If I stand way back here, and I try and pull this weight out, I cannot use my legs and I cannot use my core because I've bent over so far, I'm standing too far away from the machine. If I stand about 12 to 16 inches away from the handle, grab the rope, okay, only the rope part, that's the only part you're allowed to grab, and most people are strongest if they have their dominant hand closest to their body and their non-dominant hand above it. Now, not everybody's like that, but most people are. If it doesn't feel right for, for, your, for you, then just do, do it the opposite way. But for me, I'm, I'm going to do strong hand or dominant hand closest to my body. From here, feet are maybe shoulder width apart or slightly more. Drop your center of gravity. Just drop down. Don't bend over at the waist. Just drop down. Okay? From this position, now you can drive your legs or your heels into the floor. You can pull away from the machine with your legs. Tighten that core. Pull with your arms as well looks like that. Now, just to show you how important the legs are, I'm just going to pin my elbows to my sides. I'm not going to move my arms. I'm just going to tighten the muscles in my upper body, and I'm going to just use my legs to pull this weight out. Okay? So, the weight's out. Notice the green tape on the housing. That is good. Green is good. If the yellow, on the pull phase, if the yellow begins to disappear under the housing there, that's a warning sign that you're getting close to dropping the weight which is not allowed. If the red begins to disappear under the housing, so right there, the red is just disappearing under that housing there, that is your penalty zone. And the penalty for dropping the weight at any time during the pull phase is that you must repeat the arc that you drop that weight on or after. What I mean by that is if you complete an arc and then drop the weight, you're gonna have to repeat the arc that you just completed. Now, if you complete an arc, and then take a step into that next arc and you drop it, you only have to complete the arc that you're on, okay? Not the one you just finished, all right? So, when you're doing the pull phase, there's a couple of body position rules. Number one, you have to keep an observable bend in both elbows. You may not straight arm the pull, this is not allowed. If you straight arm the pull with one or both arms, you will get two warnings to correct that body position if you continue to straight arm the pull after that, then you will be penalized by repeating the arc that that penalty continues to occur on. The other body position rule is that you must shuffle your feet from side to side. You're not allowed to cross your feet over one another. So if it's really important to keep your body in front of the handle at all times, keep your hips and your upper body square to the handle as well. Do not turn your hips in the direction that you're moving or you will cross your feet. It's almost unavoidable. But if you keep your hips and your upper body square and lead off with the leg that has all the room to go, don't lead off with this leg or it'll get jammed up and you'll want to cross it. And then you have your first warning. Just lead off with the outside leg, okay? So pull the weight. Now lead off with the outside leg. Keep your hips and your upper body square to the handle. Move your feet. Keep your 
your center of gravity low. If I stand up, that wing goes down. So keep your center of gravity down. Keep your butt down. Move. The faster you can move your feet, the less time you have to keep the weight up. So you're going to do six arcs of the pull. Once you've completed six arcs of the pull, drop the weight, then you go into the push phase. So the push phase, again, uses the lower body, the core, and the upper body, just like you would be using in an arrest and control environment. You'd be using all three parts of your body. The core, again, really important to tie the upper and lower body together. So, grab the handle. Only the hands may touch the handle. You may not touch the handle with any other part of your body. So you cannot put your chest into it. You cannot put your shoulder on it, your chin on it, or anything else. If anything but the hands touch the handle, you will get two warnings before you're penalized. And the penalty for touching the handle with anything but your hands after that two warnings is that you will repeat the arc that that error occurs on. Okay, so the push. You're gonna stand just a little bit further away from the handle than you did for the pull phase, okay? But not much. Again, feet should be about a shoulder width apart, maybe just a little bit more. Drop down. Not bend over, just drop your center of gravity. Now your knees are bent, you can use your legs to push into the machine with your legs while you're pushing with your upper body and your core is tight to tie the whole body together. So drop down and push in. Now notice the position of my arms. My upper arm, my forearm is uh, at a 90 degree angle to my upper arm. So that there's a, about a 90 degree angle here, about. Okay, and that's, the nice, that's a nice strong position for you to get your arms in to complete this uh, effectively and, and efficiently and, and it's really kind of the easiest way to do it. Okay? So find that position in, on the handle here where your arms are going to be at about that 90 degree angle forearm to upper arm. Alright? So this time with the uh, tape, what's going to signify good is the green being buried under the cover. Okay? Now, if the yellow begins to come out of the cover, that's your warning sign that you're getting close to dropping the weight and being assessed that penalty of repeating the arc. If we see red coming out of the housing right there, there's your penalty zone. As soon as it starts to poke out of that cover, then you're assessed a penalty for the push, okay, repeating the arc. All right, so even more critical than the pull is keeping your hips and your upper body square to this handle and keeping your body in front of the handle as you're moving through the arc. Same rules apply for crossing the feet. It's not allowed. You'll get two warnings and then you'll have to repeat the arc that you continue to make that error on. So, drop down. Drive those legs into the floor, pushing towards the machine with your legs, tie the core to, tighten the core, and then push in with your upper body as well. Now you're going to move through the arc. Shuffling side to side keeping these hips and upper body square and in front of the handle at all times. And you're going to do six of these arcs, okay? For the purposes of the demonstration, I'm just going to do four here, and then we're going to put the weight down, okay? That's how you operate or you, you utilize the physical control machine here. I hope this helps you. I hope this helps you with some technique. There's going to be 80 pounds of weight on here. Remember that the weight carriage here weighs 20 pounds. So that has to be factored in with the amount of weight you use on the machine. So right now, we have 60 pounds of weight plus 20 pounds of the weight carriage equals 80. Thanks.